So example number three, we've got a pilot uh, flying from San Francisco International Airport and she's flying a Boeing 727 West, five degrees north. So where is she headed? Just curious. What about Mike? She's leaving San Francisco and she's flying west, five degrees north. Five, de five degrees towards north? California. Come on, people. She's in San Francisco and she's flying west. She's in California. They're going to Japan. That's closer. Okay. I don't know if it's there. But it's somewhere towards Asia, okay? Anyway, I just wanted to see if y'all could think. Okay. Anyways. Y'all are intelligent people. I don't know. Oh, really? That's sad. Study on that. Come on. All right. There's a 65 mile per hour wind that is blowing at an angle of north, 60 degrees east. Let's find the direction angle that the plane is actually flying on and determine the airplane's ground speed, assuming that its speed with no wind is 450 miles per hour. So, as per usual, let's set up. Well, it's a plane. Um, it's kind of got to get up in the air somehow. Okay, so um, let's see here. We've got west 5 degrees north and north 60 degrees east. So this is what we're looking at. Okay, uh, the plane west 5 degrees north. And it's going 450 miles per hour. The wind, I should use blue for the wind in the sky. Anyway, um, north 60 degrees towards east. And that is a 65 miles per hour wind. Pretty strong wind. All right, so we're going to find out where the plane is actually going um, and how fast it's actually traveling with this wind factored in. So again, whenever you've got two forces, you've got to break them down into their components, combine their components, and then go from there. So the plane would be its magnitude is 450 cosine of what? Not 175. Very good. Okay. And this is part of the reason why I want you to do this, guys. I need to see your work. Okay. Because I'm sure someone is going to make a mistake. And I need to see what mistake it was. But if you just put them the answers, um, I can't really tell. But if you at least write down what you typed into the calculator, it will help. Okay. 65 cosine of... 30. Okay, and 65 sine of 30. Okay, so our resultant is, let's add our components, 450 cosine 175 plus 65 cosine of 30. Whoops, didn't close my parentheses. All right, negative 391.996. Does that make sense? No. Does it? Yeah. What, what? Yes. I mean, why, yeah. why do you say no and why do you say yes? I didn't think you could travel a negative distance. Okay, it, but it's not a negative distance. This is the horizontal component. So it's describing it does make direction. Sense because it's on that side. The plane is in the second quadrant. Okay, and the plane's moving much faster than the wind. So the wind does have an effect, but probably not that much of an effect. So it makes sense that it's still in the second quadrant. Okay, um, so let's check the Y. <clears throat> what value should it have? Positive. Positive. It should be positive. Uh, there's no reason why we should end up in the third quadrant. Okay. I <laughs> okay, so. There's our resultant vector. Let's find its actual speed. So speed is magnitude. Okay. Uh, we do not, just, just don't even type in the negative, guys. Okay. Just don't even type in the negative when you square it because I, you better put parentheses around it if you, if you do. Okay. So the resulting speed is approximately, I've already forgotten what I just saw, 398.5. So decreases it 
Yeah. But it was, it was 50 miles per hour. Um, kind of makes sense. 65 miles per hour is pretty strong wind. Okay. And then let's find out the angle that it's actually traveling on. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 71.72 over negative 391.996. We do need to include the negative here. Okay, negative 10.368. Is that the right angle? No, what do we need to do to it? Add 180, because we're in the second quadrant. So yes, we need to add 180. So our actual direction is 169.632 degrees. <clears throat> if we were to give that as a bearing, how could we do that? Well, that wouldn't be northwest, because if you do 180 minus that, you're talking about an angle right here. That would be west degrees north. Subtract 90 from that, and you would get um, the other piece. So this would be north 79.6 degrees west. If you had to give a bearing, okay? I'm honestly, I'm pretty good with the direction angle from the positive x-axis, but if you do run across a question where it asks for the bearing, okay, that's what you would get that. We subtracted 90 because the 169 here is, um, here's our angle, okay? This right here is 169, okay? This would be our bearing angle. So if we take away the 90 from that, we get that extra piece, and you start at north, you go that many degrees west. Okay? All right, let's do one more kind of similar to this, a ship in the water. Okay, a ship is sailing due south at a speed of 22 miles per hour, and the current is flowing south 8 degrees east. So we're talking about stuff in the fourth quadrant. Okay, the ship is going due south. That means we are on the negative y-axis here. Okay, 22 miles per hour. What angle would that be? 270 or negative 90, right? The current is flowing south 8 degrees east. South 8 degrees east at 4 miles per hour. The 8 is right here, so what angle should we use for that? Uh, negative, 80. negative 82, or we could use 278. Okay, either way. All right, so we've got our ship would be 22 cosine of 270 degrees. 22 sine of 270 degrees. Let's use the unit circle for just a second. Yes. Because you start with the first letter. You start at south and you go 8 degrees towards east. So that formed that angle right there. Okay. Now, cosine of 270, what is that? Zero. Okay. How do I know that? Really, really quickly. Think about it just geometrically, guys. We are on the y-axis. The x-coordinate, if we're on the y-axis, is zero. zero. Okay. So this has no horizontal component, which makes sense. If you're going due south, you have no horizontal component. All of it is vertical. So that's zero. And what would be the y-component? Well, the sine of 270 is negative 1, so the y component would be negative 22. I'm just trying to save you some time of typing this in the calculator. Do what? Can I repeat that? I'm just using the unit circle. Sine and cosine of 270. The cosine is 0, the sine is negative 1. So I'm just, instead of having to type it in my calculator, I'm just doing, you can type it in your calculator. I'm just trying to remind you of, um, 
some other stuff that you don't need to forget. All right, the current, magnitude of 4, cosine of, let's go with the negative just for kicks, negative 82. Okay, so that means that our resultant, the X, uh, X component is simply the current, 4 cosine of negative 82, 0.557, very small, makes sense, not a very heavy current, and it's only 8 degrees, so it doesn't make a huge difference there. Um, negative 22 plus 4 sine of negative 82, okay, because we said the y component of the ship was negative 22, so the y component is negative 25.961, okay, the actual speed is the magnitude of that resultant vector, so 0.557 squared plus 25.961, yes, it was negative, but leave it out, okay. So the actual speed is approximately 25.967 miles per hour. That kind of helps it out there. And the angle, inverse tangent of negative 25.961 over 0.557, negative 88.77 degrees. Technically, that's okay. We are in the fourth quadrant, um, but I do prefer positive angles, so find the coterminal, 271.229. So not that much off of um, completely due south. Just a little bit towards east. Oh, yes, east. Yes, sir. We were told that it was four miles per hour. Oh, your paper doesn't have that? Oh, I'm sorry. You to get me change that paper. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's supposed to say four miles per hour. I'm sorry. Thank you for picking up when we finished the problem.